All right, today we are going to be making the head, uh, well, the shape of the head and the hands, which people seem to have a lot of difficulty with, but I think I found a method that, in my opinion, is a little bit easier. It plays more off the, like, simple shape, broken down. With hands, like, hands are really nothing more than a bunch of boxes, so if you can th think of it like that, it becomes a little bit easier. So I um, scaled up the arms just a little bit. And then I selected all of the vertices on the hand, and then I um, extruded on the z-axis so it's straight out in front of the hand. Just a simple, like, roundish box. Not too fancy here. Then I kind of uh, squashed it down a bit, just to flatten it. Um, and then I extended... Oops, not yet. If you think of the hand kind of like a mitten, I find it's easier too. So right now here I just extended the fingers as one shape. If you imagined your fingers all pressed together, they would be about this shape. So think of it that way before you think of a bunch of complex digits. So I closed off her mitten, <laughs> her mitten shaped hand at this point, and I decided it was time to cut the thumb in. So I cut the uh, initial palm square in half, and I ex um, extruded a thumb from it straight out and then I kind of like mod a little bit to give it more of a uh, connected tapered look um, and so you can see right now she has her mitten and if you can get this mitten shape you're pretty much you're in good shape because this is like the main important shape a hand should be and even when I'm doing 2D art I tend to think of hands as mittens struggle with the thumb a little bit. I usually do. Um, mostly I just, because I wanted the thumb to appear above the hands in the rendered view, um, so you'll see me struggle a little bit with that. The next thing I did, I decided to make the fingers. So I kind of straightened out the end of the, uh, the finger square, I'll call it, and then I loop cut, um, well, yeah, I knife cut straight parallel lines straight into it where the first finger would be and then I closed off all the open gaps inside the fingers by um, pressing F and giving it a face. So I selected all four vertices for the finger and I pressed F after cutting out the insides. And then I did this for each one of the digits. One way you can um, adjust the length and the shape of the digits is to um, face select the end of the finger and just kind of drag it around, and you'll see me do that more later. I found this method actually works really well with um, rigging, too, because I've rigged hands before and they follow this really well. Okay, um, so the middle finger should be a bit longer than both the first and the third, and the pinky should be the shortest. Um, hands also have a natural bend to them, so your fingers should never just be straight out. Like, 90% of the time, hands will be bending. Like, the fingers will be bending. Usually upwards. Or, um, towards the palm. I decided to give the hand a little personality. Um, and again, I'm just face selecting the end, and I'm just kind of pushing and pulling until it's where I want it to be. At this point, the hand is super manageable if you were tidy with your vertices. Make sure to keep looking at the left side to assure that you have the shape you want. I did not, so I kept fiddling. Gave the hand a little bit more rotation and bend. And I made sure that the ends of the fingers were a little bit wider than the tips, because the fingers should taper realistically. And then I loop cut the center of the fingers to give it um, more of the natural bend fingers have. Uh, make sure that you do this last, because the more vertices you have, just the more generally convoluted and difficult things become to, to model. So I like to 
Make sure I get the easiest things done first. Break larger masses into simple masses. Um, after this, um, after a little bit more mesh fixing, just make sure everything's nice and tidy, I select all the vertices around the whole of the neck. And then I extrude up on Z, and then I just kind of scale it with X and Y to make sure, until I have this around shape that I like, because this will be the shape of the head, so. Um, then I extrude it up again, and this time I extruded the uh, head all the way up on Z, as high as it would be. Um, another one of those instances of making the uh, harder mass into the larger mass into simple mass. And then I gave it some loop cuts where it would be rounder, and I kind of scaled all of those on the X and Y until I felt that they were pretty round. I did this for the whole head until the top, where I kind of just pushed it all together and then pressed F to give it a final face. Then I decided that the head should tip forward a little bit because with um, natural human bodies the neck kinda slopes. Um, again, very few straight edges on human bodies. And also usually the back of the head is a little bit um, You'll see, I'll do this in a moment. But the back of the head is usually less protrusive than the front. All right, um, right here I'm making a loop cut where the ear would be, and I'm taking the face where I think the ear would be and I'm extruding it out. Um, and then I'm just kind of shaping it to where I think that the ear would go. I'm looking at the left hand side to make sure, and then I loop cut it again to give it a round shape. I'm just kind of pushing and pulling, and I give it another loop cut. Just loop cut wherever you want it to be more round, but again, be careful because more vertices is t most of the time more of a problem. And so I decided that the head was not quite big enough. And we're nearly done, I'm just pushing in back of the knees a little bit to get rid of some of that straightness. Alright, 